In the last video, we created a .NET SOAP service where we could send in a SOAP 1.1 request and get back a successful SOAP 1.1 response. We still had a few issues with it where we were getting JSON for unsupported media types, etc. And in this video, what we're going to focus on is the fact that there are two SOAP protocols. So as I mentioned, our existing solution only copes with SOAP 1.1, but there is also a SOAP 1.2 specification, which as you can see came out seven years after the original SOAP specification. So there's a lot of enhancements and things and lessons learned in the SOAP 1.2 specification, as we'll see as we go through. So let's go and see if we can create a SOAP service that is SOAP 1.2 compliant and also still host a SOAP 1.1 service alongside it in the same .NET API. Okay, so here we are back in the code. And so let's go first off to our constants. And as we can see, we've got a SOAP 1.1 namespace. So we are definitely going to need a SOAP 1.2 namespace. The namespaces are different between SOAP 1.1 and 1.2. So let's just put in the SOAP 1.2 namespace, which is that one. And if we jump over to our SOAP model and look at our SOAP request envelope, we'll see that we've currently got a SOAP request envelope that is hard coded to the SOAP 1.1 namespace. So we need to fix this up so that we can handle both SOAP 1.1 and SOAP 1.2. So how can we do that? Well, what we're going to do is create two new classes, which is a SOAP 1.1 request envelope that lives in the SOAP 1.1 namespace. And we're going to derive that off of SOAP request envelope. And then we're going to do exactly the same for SOAP 1.2. And that's it. We've got our SOAP request 1.1 and 1.2 envelopes that now live in different namespaces, but still inherit all the common functionality of having a SOAP header and a SOAP body. So to make sure that this still works, we can jump over to our service controller, change this to a SOAP 1.1 request envelope, quickly run this up, run in our SOAP 1.1 request, and that still works. And what we can do now is add in another test to this. And if we come back over to our SOAP constants, let's just steal the SOAP 1.2 namespace and put this last request in the wrong namespace. And we get a deserialization error coming back in a restful problem details format, which again, isn't what we want, but we're going to fix that at some point. And I'm just catching all of these errors at the moment, just so that we know that these are problems that we've got to go and deal with. So where we're trying to get to is where we can run all of these requests that are in my test file and see successful or expected SOAP responses rather than these restful responses that we're getting so that we know that it looks like a true SOAP service. Anyway, that's proved that we can still run our SOAP 1.1 service. So let's go and have a look at the SOAP response envelope. We can do a similar thing here as we did with our SOAP request envelope. We can make this a SOAP 1.1 response envelope will be that. Equally have a SOAP 1.2 response envelope. And now that will break our controller again because we need a SOAP 1.1 response envelope here rather than just a base SOAP response envelope. And that's because I'm going to change this to be an abstract class so that we can't instantiate this. We can only ever instantiate an actual response type of 1.1 or 1.2. So we protect ourselves against that. So now let's go and create ourselves a service two controller, which is going to be a 1.2 service. So let me just go and fix all of this up. We're going to make this a SOAP 1.2 request and send back a SOAP 1.2 response. And we're also going to need to copy this test script to create a new one. Let's create a service two. And then in here, so let's just swap these comments around. So let's save all this and run this up. And then let's just test our SOAP 1.1 service. Still works, does, and sends us back in the SOAP 1.1 namespace, which is SOAP envelope. And let's try service two. So that will now fail with a deserialization error. Whereas calling it correctly with the SOAP 1.2 namespace 
which is soap dash envelope and our namespace comes back in the soap 1.2 namespace so that's a soap 1.1 and 1.2 service at a very high level running side by side so we're starting the beginnings of being able to support multiple soap versions but we're not there yet so let's move on and let's try and make this a little bit more robust so at the moment we've got these two controllers and they're just deriving off of controller base we can get some extra functionality and conveniences if we create our own class hierarchy here so let's go and create a new controller base class that we will derive all of our soap classes from so let's create a new soap controllers soap controller base and here we'll derive this off of controller base which means in our service controllers we can then go and have this derive from soap controller base and we'll do the same for service 2 and also move this controller that we can get rid of api controller we can move that to the base class and then we don't need either of those attributes so we're starting to slim down and simplify our implementation classes by having these base classes which is good so let's go and add in a default constructor into this so that's now broken our two controllers so we need to go and fix up their constructors so that we call in our base and we also need that environment being injected in to our main constructors as well fix up service 2 now we need some utility classes so let's create an enum and in this enum class we're just going to have a simple enumeration of what the soap version is whether it's 1.1 or 1.2 and we'll see why we need this right now so we're going to create an attribute we're going to attribute our controllers and we'll see this in a minute so we're going to put an attribute on here to tell this controller what the soap version is that it supports because you can't have or well, it doesn't make any sense to have a service that is both soap 1.1 and soap 1.2 compliant so a controller is only ever going to be soap 1.1 or 1.2 compliant never both because you would have a different service to support that alternative version in my view so let's as I say, go and create a soap controller attribute. And we're going to derive this off of the produces attribute as we see here. So, and we'll see why that's the case at the moment. So if we jump back over to our controllers, we can see here that we've got this produces. So this is the attribute that we're actually deriving off. So effectively what we're going to do is move this up to the controller level and add some extra bells and whistles and magic into here so we're going to add a property into here that gets us the soap version so that's the enum that we just created we then need a constructor for this attribute that takes in that soap version and then also specifies the base produces attribute as xml so effectively doing what we were doing in our controller so producing application xml we're now doing it hard coded by declaring this as a SOAP controller, which kind of makes sense because SOAP is always XML based. So now that we've got our attribute, we can go and add that onto our controllers. So we get something that looks like this for this controller and for service controller two, we change that to a SOAP 1.2 service. So this now means I can get rid of the produces off of these post methods as well. So again, it's about simplification where we can. So back over in our SOAP controller, we can now add a property that we initialize inside of our constructor. And we can then get the SOAP version for a particular controller that inherits off of this SOAP controller. So we're expecting there to be a SOAP version attribute is what we're saying. So then inside of our constructor, exactly that, we can go and look for that SOAP attribute looking at the attributes against the controller and if we don't find one we can throw an exception to say that there should be one and if we find one then we can obviously set the soap version inside of here to be the property from that attribute so that's now given us the ability to know what soap version a particular controller is supporting or targeting and while we're in here we'll add a convenience method for creating a soap response envelope because now that we've got two soap versions but a single base controller 
we want a way to be able to tell using that SOAP version, we can determine what the SOAP version is of the response that we should create. So exactly that, we're checking that internal variable now. And if it's SOAP 1.1, we return a 1.1 response envelope. Otherwise we return a SOAP 1.2 response envelope, which means that we can now jump back over to our controller post method. And rather than needing to know here what to call, we can just change this to setting res to a create SOAP response envelope and our action method doesn't actually need to know about what type of response to create that's all done for us so again you can see that we're now standardizing across soap 1.1 and soap 1.2 regardless and the complexities are being pushed away into base classes and hidden away from our implementation so simplification all the way so let's just run this up and we'll put a breakpoint in our constructor of our base class for our controller, just so that we can see what's going on. And we'll also put one after the create of the response. So let's test our service one. We can see that that drops into our constructor. And when it does, it finds our SOAP version and it sets our SOAP version at 1.1 as we would expect. And then here, our response is a SOAP 1.1 response envelope. If we run that on, we see that that's still all working. Whereas now when we call the SOAP 1.2 call, then our SOAP version in here is set to 1.2. And inside of our controller, the response is a SOAP 1.2 response. And the SOAP 1.2 also still works. So we're starting down the roads of simplifying all of this out, moving this into base classes, but that's the, the fundamental building blocks of supporting the two versions. We're not there completely yet, as we'll see when we get to dealing with errors, but this puts the building blocks in place to be able to support that. And as we've said, we've still got problem details coming out that we need to deal with at some future point as well. But that's it for this video. SOAP 1.1 and 1.2 in a single .NET web API. Let me know what you think. Is this useful to you? Would you ever create a web API that supports SOAP 1.1 and 1.2? So just a quick thank you to my sponsors. This channel wouldn't be here without them. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.